What is the difference between an API and a webhook? When would you use one over the other? And why have webhooks become so popular in system designs? First, we will quickly define what an API is. If you are already comfortable with your understanding of APIs, you can use the chapters to skip ahead to the crucial differences or webhooks. An API or application programming interface is a set of rules and protocols that allow one software application to interact with another. Think of it as a contract that specifies how requests and responses should be formatted. We're going to use the example of a personal library web and mobile application. This application allows you to create notes for your books and store them in a cloud database. This database is accessible only through an API. The client and the API would need to define the contract by which the client can send notes to the API. Our note creator API would define this contract using a tool such as Swagger and standards like OpenAPI. This contract would detail the operation required to create a note. In this case, it is a post operation and it would also define the body of the request the title as a string and the note as a string as well. There are other elements that contracts detail, such as the headers and also the content format. In our case, we are using JSON, but other formats are usable such as XML. When the client obeys this contract, a new note is created. If the client, whether it's the web client or a mobile client, does not abide to this contract, the operation is rejected and no note is created. So this approach is really good because it allows the client to access certain functionalities such as create notes without actually understanding how it's built within the API. Furthermore, it allows one API to serve both the web client and the mobile client. Just as the clients don't care how the API is implemented, the API doesn't care how the client is implemented so long as it follows the contract. I'll also note that APIs typically are implemented in a RESTful manner. I've done a video on this before, which I've linked in the description. Okay, so here are the crucial aspects of an API when comparing it to a webhook from the perspective of the API. First, an API is a request-based architecture, meaning if application A wants to get information from application B, it specifically needs to request it. So in our example, if the client wants to get a list of all books, it has to perform a request to the API. Let's say it is a GET request. The API will then respond with a list of books. Secondly, it is consumer initiated. So the client in our example has sent a request to the API for a list of books. This operation was started by the client. So this is a great paradigm for the examples already given. However, let's build on our book list example. Let's say the API queries another service named BookLister on startup, which provides the list of all available books. Our API holds this list in memory for quick responses. Well, now we have a problem. Our API doesn't know when a new book is added and therefore doesn't know when to query the BookLister service again. Okay, so I'm editing this video and I just realized I never explained the term client as some of you may not know what it refers to. It's just the system making the request. So in our example, the web applications are clients of the API. The API is a client of the book lister. Okay, so back to the problem. Under the API paradigm, the only solution to this is called polling. Polling is where a client repeatedly requests data from another service at regular intervals. To implement polling in our example, we could make our API request the book lister service every 10 seconds to check if there is a new value in the list. This works, but it is inefficient. A new book may be only added a few times an hour. That's a lot of requests sent for no reason, as there is no change. This is the problem webhooks aim to fix. 
Hey guys, this is Sean from Try Accept. To support the channel, please go to tryaccept.io. Also, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments down below. I try to answer as many of them as possible. Now we're going to first define the differences between an API and a webhook from the perspective of the webhook, as the API perspective is still fresh in your mind. I will then cover where they are similar. A webhook operates in the inverse to an API in that it is an event based architecture. That is, if application A wants to get information from application B, it simply waits and listens to what application B tells it. Application A does not need to make any requests to receive further updates. So in our example, the API is now a service which has both API endpoints and a webhook endpoint called booklist webhook. The booklist or service will do a post operation to this endpoint informing our service of any new book added. This is great as we've reduced the required amount of requests conducted by the service from one every 10 seconds to just one on startup and then listening to the book list or service. Now you can also see this architecture is no longer consumer driven as the service is no longer making requests to receive the updates. Instead, it is provider driven. That is, the book list or service is initiating the transaction or operation of updating the backend services book list. Okay, so before we move on, I am anticipating your question. How can a service have both API endpoints and a webhook endpoint such as the example? Well, they are not mutually exclusive and in fact, a webhook is a type of API. So a service can have many endpoints some which are just API endpoints and others which are webhook event driven endpoints. Okay, so why webhooks? Well, it is clear from our example that in certain situations, they are a far cleaner solution than APIs, reducing the amount of operations made and reducing the computational load. These are typically implemented in payment systems such as Stripe. So if you can imagine briefly, you have an application and your application subscriptions are handled by Stripe. This means that information pertaining to your user subscription status and whether payment succeeded or not is held behind the Stripe service. If we were to use an API and polling to query our user's subscription status, we'd need to send a request for each user every 10 seconds to keep our information up to date. This is not scalable. It is not scalable for us and it's certainly not scalable for Stripe who would then have millions of requests sent to it every minute by millions of applications. This is where the webhook shines. Instead, we will provide Stripe with an endpoint there to send messages to, let's say Stripe webhooks. Stripe will then inform us of a subscription cancellation or a failed payment through sending a post request to this endpoint. We can then update our user information. This is a terrific paradigm and greatly simplifies our application. Okay, so where are webhooks and APIs similar? Well, as you already know, a webhook is a subset of an API. So they both typically leverage the standard HTTP methods and other web standards. So for example, Typically webhooks are implemented using post and put methods, which APIs also leverage. Finally, typically they both contain some form of contract. For example, Stripe will make a post request with the user ID and the result of the payment. Okay, so that is it from me today. I'll see you next time.